Hey guys, I'm Mike Caviani. I'm the Dog Behavior Program Manager here at Austin Pets Live. And in this video, we're going to cover working walk. So working walk now is kind of part two of teaching your dog to walk nicely on leash. You've watched loose leash walk, you've practiced loose leash walk, you and your dog are pretty comfortable with that beginning introduction to footwork, to pressure and release, and to this idea that being near the person is much better than pulling, right? So now we've covered that, great. But now let's take it to the next level. And now let's teach our dogs to walk right by us. Not just not pull, but be right in what we call working position. So be right in working position. Classically, people might call that heel position. We call it working position. Doesn't matter. Also, it does not matter what side that is. But you want to pick a side and stick with it, all right? So at APA, we teach all of our dogs to walk on the left. It really doesn't matter though. We have plenty of clients who want their dog to learn to walk on the right. That's fine. Just once you pick it, be consistent. And whatever side you pick, that is forever working position. Okay? So for working walk, we've now, again, we're, te we're, we're getting to the point where the dog's walking right by our side. So it's going to be more strict than loose leash walk, right? We're not just saying you can't pull. We're saying you have to be right next to me. So right next to me is the sweet spot. That's where there's no leash pressure at all. That's where the food and the cookies come in. That's where the praise and the petting comes in. So that's where I'd always want to be if you're the dog, right? That's the best place that you can be. And if they fall out of position, if they pull in any direction, we're doing a drop and go, which you're going to see Amy Jones, our adoption follow-up coordina coordinator, demonstrate. So working walk, a little bit more complicated than loose leash walk. There's some more steps involved because we're, we're not just saying you can't pull. We want them here. So we have to be very exact with exactly what we're telling the dog and how to do it. So you're going to see Amy with one of our adoptable dogs demonstrating working walk. Let's see how it goes. All right, we're going to be covering working walk now, guys. So this is Amy and Oliver. We're going to be going over working walk. So before we start walking, let's just talk about some hand positioning. So Amy right now is standing with her arms just relaxed at her side just draped and relaxed just at her side, dangling just like you would if you didn't have a leash in your hands. In her left hand, she has her working length. That's just the least amount of leash she can give Oliver where he's not feeling leash pressure, right? But we don't want to give him too much working length. So like if you had too much working length, you'd look like that, right? That's too much leash. We need Oliver to be right next to us. That's too much leash for him to be kind of going wherever, going wherever he wants. Not enough working length, would be bad as well. So that would be if Amy was like, see, like that's, she's, he's feeling tension right now, right? We don't want that either. So just a little bit of leash to give him, but not enough to feel pressure, but not enough, not too much to have him be moving wherever he wants. Her other hand, her right hand, is just holding the handle of the leash. Uh, no wrapping around your hand. We're gonna say that's, that's a no-no. That can cause injuries. She's just kind of holding the handle in her right hand, just like that. So now, for us, working position is our left-hand side. It really doesn't matter at home. If you want that to be on your right, that's okay. You've just got to pick a side and stick with it, okay? So whether it's the right or the left, we don't care. Just pick it and then make that be forever working position, all right? So Oliver's on our left-hand side. We've got our hands in the right position. Our working length looks good. And now Amy in a second here, when I release her, is gonna go start walking Oliver around and demonstrate working walk. Now, this one, we're pickier, right? He's gonna have to be right next to Amy. It's not good enough anymore to just simply not pull. You should have watched loose leash walk before this. So if you haven't, turn this off, go watch loose leash walk with our dog Mona, and you can see and hear all the details of loose leash walk. But now moving on into working walk, Amy's gonna release Oliver now to go walk, and now she's in working walk. So now, Again, we're pickier. He's gotta be right next to you. He can't just simply be not pulling. So anytime Amy feels any pressure build up in that collar, if she feels Oliver out of position at all, she's going to do what we call a drop and go. Drop and go, that's the move. She's gonna drop the leash out of her left hand and she's gonna go with her feet in the opposite direction that Oliver is pulling. So it's a continuation of loose leash walk, right? Loose leash walk was similar in that you're moving your legs in the opposite direction. This is just, we're pickier. We're not just saying you can't pull. We're saying 
you've got to be right next to us, right? So drop and go. So again, we're just using this pressure and release concept to motivate the dog to hang out near us. Now, while he's hanging out near Amy, that's the sweet spot. No pressure at all. He can even get some cookies in that spot. He can get some praise and petting. That's the best place to be. Anywhere else, oh, that's kind of a nuisance. Uh, I don't really want to feel that pressure. So, all right, let me choose to be next to Amy. So he's hanging out in working position. Now Amy's rewarding him. It's a lot on your plate, right? You've got to be making sure the dog is walking nicely near you, paying attention to not putting pressure on the collar and moving your feet whenever he's out of position and then showing him that's what we want from you. Absolutely good boy when he's near you. Praise him, pet him, give him treats, whatever is motivating to the dog to show him that that's the sweet spot. So he's trotting along like a show dog next to Amy. Amy rewards him for that. Anytime he pulls, whether it's pulling backwards, forward, off to the side, it's a drop the leash out of your left hands and then it's a go with the feet. So it's, it's different, right? It's a lot different than most of you have probably ever walked your dog because we're so used to using our hands. But this is all about the feet so that we can really have that pressure and the release of pressure make a whole lot of sense to the dog. And remember when we introed the video, right? We talked about this reflex, oppositional reflex. We talked about how we activate that when we yank on the dog. We talked about, you know, getting into the dog's brain and like why would they want to be near you if they're just feeling sustained pressure in the collar the whole time. So see how loose that is there? There's no tension in that collar. As soon as he stopped, Amy dropped. That's when he felt tension because he was out of position. Then he caught up to Amy and now there's no tension anymore. So that leash pressure signifies, oh, I'm out of position, got it, I've got it, I've got to adjust something. That's the only time he should ever feel pressure. He pulled forward, Amy dropped, she went with her feet and got him right back in position. We're gonna do one more lap and then we're gonna bring Amy closer on in and we're gonna kinda break down each part of what a drop and go looks like. That was another good forward drop and go. So Oliver lagged behind. Amy dropped the leash out of her left and moved her feet forward. She didn't turn around. She didn't go back to him. She just dropped the leash out of her left hand and moved her feet forward. So we're still in a good working walk here. That looks nice and, nice and relaxed. We're gonna come to a stop and sit in front of us for a second. Just going for that auto sit. Very nice. All right, so. This is hopefully making sort of some sense to you by now, right? You probably have a little bit of a, a muddy idea of what we're talking about, but let's, let's kind of go over some of the common areas that we see people get hung up, all right? So I'm gonna release Amy to do some working walk again in a second, and we're gonna demonstrate first each, kind of, each part of the drop and go. So first, we're gonna show you why we have to do the drop, right? If you don't do the drop, then that dog is just feeling consistent, sustained, leash pressure that they can't turn off. And we've talked about why we don't like that. Then we're gonna show you, oh, there's our train nearby. Then we're gonna show you why you need to do the go. So if you do the drop, but you don't do the go, we're gonna show you why that's just not really that efficient. And then we're gonna put it all together. We're gonna, do, we're gonna do the drop, we're gonna do the go. And then there's this last part that you need to kind of make sure you're smooth on to get the dog back in working position as you head on your walk again. All right, so we're gonna show what it looks like for each, each piece of that working walk. So Amy's gonna release Oliver here and she's gonna start showing why we do the drop. So when Oliver pulls, if Amy doesn't drop, if she just goes, see how there's leash pressure in Oliver's collar the whole time? So again, Oliver pulls forward a little bit Amy goes but doesn't do the drop, that's just sustained collar pressure, which we've talked about already, about why we don't wanna do that. So that's why we do the drop, all right? So now Amy's walking and she's gonna do the drop in a second, but she's not gonna do the go part. So she's gonna, she, so Oliver's walking, she drops but she doesn't go. So now, now what, right? Oliver's kind of standing there, he's not sure what the next step is. So it just can kind of take, too long. We just don't feel like that's that efficient. So we're going to show you that one more time. So she's walking with Oliver. He's walking nicely, but let's say he pulls. 
So he pulls towards the camera. We'll show you from this angle. So he pulls, Amy drops. Now Oliver's out there in front of her. What now, right? Oliver's not getting really much direction anymore and we want him next to us. So that's why we do the go, all right? The go kind of guides Oliver towards you. It guides him over in the direction we want him to be in that working position. So that's why we do the go. So now, Amy's gonna now put it all together and do a drop and do a go, but then there's this last part you've got to master. So she drops, she goes, but now what, right? So like, uh, what do we do now? So let's do another drop and go here in a second. And Amy's gonna show you again, without doing the last piece, why we need to have this really last piece to polish the drop and go. So she's gonna drop, she's gonna go, but now, now what? Right, do you, do you turn around? Nope, you don't do that, what, what do you do now? Okay, so now Amy's gonna show you that last final move. She's gonna drop, she's gonna go, and then we've gotta get Oliver back on our left, right? So she's gotta kind of go see that little hook she just did. She kinda of went to cut him off a little bit. We're gonna show you a few more of those. So that's that last final move. You've dropped, you've gone with your feet. The dog is now coming back towards you, but now you have to go help them out and get them back on your left so you might have to go cut them off. You might have to go do a little hook around them to get them back on your left. Amy's gonna do another one here and she's gonna show you why we do that. So like, you drop, you go. And then if you just walk forward, you might end up tripping on your dog or your dog might end up being on the opposite side. So we're gonna drop, we're gonna go. And then now if Amy just walks forward, see now he's out of position, he's on the right, she's gonna trip over him, it's awkward. So that last final step of your drop and go, one more of these to show you what it looks like all together. And this is the forward drop and go, right? This is when your dog pulls in front of you, which is the biggest complaint most people have. So we're gonna drop, we're gonna go. And then now that little side step to get him back on your left as you gather your leash, as you go forward again, it's just that little side step to make sure he's in working position as you head about your walk. So drop, go, start to move forward again as the dog comes back to you, and then just do that little side step to get him back on your left. And that's it, that's working walk. So we're here to obviously, you know, work on this stuff with you guys, but this is a way you guys can see this, practice at home, try this, you know, without us there, and hopefully that made sense, again, that is, different, right? It's a lot different than we're all used to. We're using our feet. We're not really using our hands for anything. So at no point during working walk did you see Amy using her hands to fix the pulling. He, she never pulled with her hands. She was never yanking him around. The hands are really just gently cradling that leash. The feet is what we use to adjust any of that pulling. So a little different, but hopefully you saw how effective it is because the dog doesn't have to be motivated by your food, they don't have to be motivated, motivated by your praise or your petting, that pressure and release is always motivating. And then, next to you, that's where the sweet stuff is. That's the petting and the praise and the cookies and all that stuff once they care about that. So that's Working Walk. Thanks guys, that, look, that looked great, that was awesome.